Can-Can puzzles belong in the classroom both because they are good for problem solving and for skill acquisition. In this video we're going to start looking at some of Thomas Schneider's Can-Can puzzles. Now Can-Can is trademarked, so he calls his puzzles Tom-Tom puzzles. They are beautiful. Then we're going to look at a variant that allows for great flexibility in designing puzzles for the grade 2 through grade 10 classrooms. Let's start with a small puzzle so you understand how they work. You must place the digits 1 through 4 in each row and each column. There are two regions. All of the digits in both of those regions add up to 20. Let's see, the smaller region here, let's experiment. So that's 4 plus 2 plus 3 plus 3 plus 2 plus 4, that's 18. That's too small, so let's try to make it bigger. I'm going to try to fit in as many fours as possible. Remember that no two fours can be on the same row or the same column. So I think that is the most fours I can place in. And then I'm going to try to place as many threes as I can. And now two. And just by coincidence, that's 20. This looks good. Now the first row, of course, I need a one in it. And let's look at the third row here, that needs a 1 and a 2, but I already have a 1 in the first column, so the 1 has to go in the last column, and the 2 has to go in the first column. Okay, now look at the distribution of 4s. We need to have a 4 in that last column, and it has to be in this place here, because the other place already has a 4 in, in that row, so we're going to do that. And then if we look up this column, we see that that has to be a 3. What else do we know? Yes, here this has to be a 1. And over on this side, we know that that has to be a 3. Right. And we can just fill in the rest now pretty fast. So that's a sample of a Ken Ken puzzle being solved. Uh, Thomas Schneider's puzzles are absolutely works of art. If you want to pick up his book, I strongly recommend Tom Tom Puzzles. He's got a great website too, Grandmaster Puzzles. So you can go there and you, he gives you free puzzles. I got some of these puzzles from his website, some from the book. Despite really liking Can Can Puzzles, the format is too restrictive when developing curricular puzzles for the grade 2 through grade 10 classroom. I've developed a little twist on these can can puzzles that provides a lot of richness. These are cartouche. They are on the Temple of Karnak and they identify Egyptian royalty. These puzzles that I'm going to describe are going to be called cartouche puzzles. We, again, we can't use can can because that's trademarked. So let's see how our cartouche works. Here's a single one. Here we have to have three digits, and two of them on the right have to add up, and then we're going to multiply those by the digits on the left to create 18. So let's see. Is this going to work? 5 plus 4, that is 9, times 2, that's 18. This isn't the only way that it could work. We could also have 6 times 1 plus 2. Okay. So let's see a puzzle now. So this is a simple cartouche puzzle. Here we want to... Where, where are we going to start on this? Let, let's start up on the 8. So here we want three digits. We're going to only use the digits 1 through 4 again in each row and each column. So let's see. I think we, this will work. 3 times 1 plus 2. No, that's 9. So that's not going to work. 2 times 3 plus 1, yes, that's going to work. But we don't actually know the order of the 3 and the 1. So it's got to be one of those. Okay, where to now? Let's uh, go down here, work on the 14. So the only way that we're going to be able to get 14 is 2 times 7. But we again don't know the order of the 4 and the 3. Okay, so we know that 
But that does give us insight because we know that a 4 and a 3 occur in the right column. That means that our 8 has to be 2, 3, 1 in that order. Okay, let's continue. So this has to be 4 and 3 and 1 over here. And this has to be 2. But now we don't know which other two are going to go in there. So maybe you want to turn off the video now and think about that. How are we going to finish off those last six? Here's the answer, one and four. And that makes that four and three. And then we can quickly do the middle and we've solved our first cartouche puzzle. Oh, yeah. Let's move forward a couple of years. This would be a review puzzle. It deals with many different concepts. Here is one cartouche. Here the dark blue indicates subtraction and the pink multiplication. Here we're dealing with numbers 1 through 7. And how are we going to solve this? Let's try this. Well that would mean 3 times 4 minus 2 times 5 minus 4, so that's going to be 6. So that is not going to work well. Let's try something else. 7 times 2 minus 1 times 2 minus 1, that's going to work. You notice that it's, we don't have a lot of information about the dark blue areas. We could have 1 or 2, we could have 4 or 5. We can, there's many different things that work there, but there's only one number that works in the top left slot. So we know that that's going to be a 7, so we've learnt about one thing in our big problem. Okay, let's look over here. Here we have red, which means division, and yellow. What does concatenation mean? It's easy. Don't panic over the word, the huge word. Uh, 1, 2 concatenated means 12. 6, 0 concatenated means 60. So it's even easier than addition. So what does this mean? This means that 60 divided by 12 must equal 5. It does. So this is one potential solution, except there's a 0 in it, and we're only dealing with the digits 1 through 7. So that doesn't work. What about this? This does work. 65 divided by 13 is 5. What about this? 70 divided by 14. Again, we have a 0. 75 divided by 15 is equal to 5. Is this a solution? No, it's not, because here we have two 5s in the right column. That's not going to work. Next, we have 80 divided by 16, and now we're out of range. We're, we're, at, we're using digits equal to 8, so that's too high. So we know that the solution is either 13 and 65 or 65 and 13. So we learn a lot from looking there. There's a solution to the whole puzzle. You can also use these cartouche puzzles to focus in on one skill set. Here, this puzzle is all about division with remainders. Let's zoom in on the cartouche on the lower left. So here we have 25 remainder 1. Is this a solution? Yes. 51 divided by 2, that is 25 remainder 1. Another solution, 76 divided by 3. Those are the only two solutions. So the students will gather information like this and they'll be able to solve for, first of all, which digits are part of this puzzle, and second of all, where do they go? Here's the solution for the whole grid. Okay, here's another problem. This one is dealing with lowest common multiples. This one with means. This puzzle would be used for grade 9 or 10 students looking at algebra. Here, instead of adding digits, we'd be adding both digits and variables. So what would be a solution to get to 4a squared? Well, the light blue is addition, the dark blue is subtraction, so that would be 2a squared 
plus a squared plus a squared, that's 4a squared, minus 0. We've got it. Another solution might be 2a squared plus 2a squared plus 1 minus 1. And here is the solution. You can find lots of cartouche puzzles on the mathpickle.com website. Enjoy. Thank you.